So what happens when you live out in the middle of nowhere and you need more internet bandwidth than one Starlink dish can provide? The answer is you get more than one Starlink dish. So we currently have three and I wanted to walk you through uh, all the steps in planning it out and setting it up. First things first, dish selection. We have two Gen 2 Starlink dishes and one Gen 3 Starlink dish. Uh, I did try out the high performance dishes, which are quite a bit more expensive. And the reality was for the amount of money involved, it really wasn't worth it. It got us, I don't know, between one and five more megabits upload bandwidth, which is the main thing I care about. But the service was more expensive and the dish was way more expensive. So, you know, unless you're running something really mission critical, I'd recommend just getting the regular dishes like these. Now, the second piece is where do you put them? Now, obviously you wanna get them in a place that has as good a line of sight as possible. We've got them up here on the roof because we're surrounded by trees. You can use the obstruction checking feature in the app to see where a good spot would be. However, if you have multiple dishes, the Starlink recommendation is that they're at least six feet apart. And I think that's so the, the radios and antennas in them don't interfere with each other. Um, so we've got them spaced out. I think that's quite important. So now you really have to check line of sight for all of your locations that you're gonna put dishes. And then you gotta figure out how to mount them. This dish here was already in place when we uh, bought the property. It's just bolted to the roof with a roof mount. It goes through the tile. I didn't love that. I got these two folding mounts. I'll put a, a product link to them um, down below. Um, but they're these nice little folding ridge mounts that just have bricks in them as weight that I got from the hardware store. And um, I really like those because, you know, if you don't want to damage your roof, you don't want to drill something through it, potentially create a leak or you're renting or whatever, um, they're a real easy mount. The new Gen 3 dishes, it's just a, a fancy ethernet plug. You can make your own if you want to or buy your own. So the one thing about the cable they provide is that it has this rubberized flange here, which prevents water from getting in the connector, but otherwise it's just an RJ45. So if you want to run your own, you know, Cat5, Cat6, you totally can. It's PoE, which is power over internet, so that's how the power gets to the dish. Um, this just snaps onto this mount like that. Uh, and the big difference, the other big difference between the Gen 3s and the Gen 2s, Gen 2s have motors in them so they can align themselves. With these, they just have you pull up the app and I'll show you. They just have you manually align them and I just wiggled that a little bit so I may need to realign it. And you can see here, they just give you a little like alignment chart. So if I knock this out of alignment here, you can, it just knows which way it needs to be turned and you do the tilt adjustment too. So, And that's just making sure it's, it's pointed in the most optimal direction to reach the most satellites. Um, pretty easy. So you run one cable per dish back to the base stations and I'll show you that. I did hear from someone in the comments on the last video that they sell adapters that go between just a regular ethernet cable and um, the dish with the right uh, plug and everything. I'll, I'll put a link to those down in the description. I haven't used those yet, but they seem like a good idea to save some money. All right, let's head down and I'll show you the base station setup and I'll show you the router and how that's all wired together. And then I'll show you how we bond these into a single connection. So all of those cables come in here to the Starlink routers. And for this, we want to set them into bypass mode. And that's a setting in the app. Um, I think I've already got mine in, but it's in the configuration. You, you swipe over and it just turns them into essentially an ethernet connection. They don't do any Wi-Fi. They don't do any, any other router stuff. They just give you an IP address on an ethernet cable. For the Gen 3, there's an ethernet port on the back that you can then plug into your router. Uh, for the Gen 2, what you need to do is go get one of these ethernet adapters here, like this. And what happens is you plug that uh, adapter into the bottom of the router where the antenna would normally go. And then you'll plug the antenna into that and that gives you an ethernet port off the side. That all goes into the router. We have one over there because I have a slightly too short cable, but basically it comes in on these three ethernet cables from each of the Starlink routers. And then this is a, a GL iNet Flint 2 router. 
Previously, I used one of the GL uh, iNet Slate AX routers, which worked well for two connections. Um, but this is a much more powerful router and it's got more ports on it, so I can do three. However, you need to do some configuration of this for two things. One, you need to set up Speedify to bond the two connections together. And if you're using three Starlink dishes, you need to enable a third Ethernet port to be a WAN port instead of a LAN port. They're, they're labeled LAN, but you can reconfigure these to do a LAN port. So let me show you on the computer how to do that. So there's a couple things you need to do on your router to get this all configured. So the first thing is to add that third WAN port if you need it. Uh, and the way to do that is to go into System and then Advanced Settings and then go to Lucy. And this is accessing the UI for the un underlying OpenWRT uh, operating system that runs on this router. It's great. I love being able to have access to the full system. So then you want to go to Network Interfaces and you want to create a third interface. So I created this one, Third WAN, uh, for my third WAN port. And the way you do that is you go down to Add New Interface, and then you type in the name. So we're, you know, we use Third WAN, Protocol, DHCP Client, Device, and you want to assign the device uh, LAN 2 is what I assigned, which is the second LAN port. Um, it's already assigned to the third WAN, um, but it would be that right there. And then you hit Create Interface. Now... You do need to do one more step here, which is you need to go into third WAN and you need to tell uh, OpenWRT that this is a WAN port, not a LAN port. So you go into firewall settings here and then you assign the firewall zone WAN here. And that says this is a WAN port, treat it as such. Um, and then you hit save, save and apply down here and you're good to go. So that's adding a third WAN port. Now let's talk about installing Speedify. Now Speedify is what bonds the three Starlink dishes together into what looks like one internet connection. And it kind of works like a VPN. So basically it creates a tunnel on the three different uh, connections to a single central server. And it sends packets alternately down those three connections, sometimes down one connection, sometimes down two connections or more for redundant streaming so that you can get really high reliability streaming. And then at the far side, it merges those all back together into a single uh, stream and sends it on its, its way over the internet and then vice versa for packets coming back. To install Speedify, you need to SSH into the router. So to SSH in, you SSH as root, at, and then the IP address of the router there. So this gets us into the terminal on the router. Then you're going to type in this command here. And this is the installation script for Speedify. And I already have it installed, so it's, it's just going to update things and make sure that all the packages I have installed are up to date. You can find this on Speedify's website. You need to create an account first anyway. Good to go. And then uh, you need to reboot your router. Um, and you can do that either through the normal web interface here, um, or you can just type reboot on the command line. Um, once that's done and it's rebooted, uh, you should see Speedify under VPN in the main GLI net panel here. So you can go down here to Speedify, and you should see all of your interfaces. So you should see three Starlink connections if that's what you're doing, or two, or whatever you're doing. It is worth noting there are some settings worth playing with um, to get the best speeds. So um, one thing is if you if you're maybe you're doing two Starlink connections and a cellular connection or something like that, um, you can set priorities on your interfaces. So I just clicked on the top one here. I always put my interfaces all to primary, um, but you can set them to secondary, backup, never, etc. Um, you can set data caps if you have uh, or, or rate limits if you have special needs on particular connections. For Starlink, I don't do any of that. And then uh, the other thing to look at is in the, in the hamburger menu here in the settings, um, bonding mode, I do speed plus enhanced streaming because the thing I care most about is just getting more bandwidth. Uh, 
And then enhanced streaming, make sure that, you know, video calls and voice calls, and then if I'm doing any live streaming, that those are um, treated separately and packets are sent redundantly so that uh, if there's any packet loss on any of the Star Starlink connections or they drop out briefly when they switch satellites, that that is smoothed over seamlessly. It works really well. With no problems doing voice calls, video calls, it works great. Uh, and then the other one is, um, the other couple things to look at are transport mode. It's worth playing around with these. I have it set to auto right now, but I've in the past I've had it set to TCP multiple, which has worked well for me. Um, but I would recommend playing with those and running some speed tests to see what works the best for you. And then header compression I have turned on, and that seems to improve speed. And that's pretty much it. There's really not a lot to it. And then, you know, you can configure the router to do wireless and all the other stuff you would normally do on a router. It's pretty straightforward. People have been asking, you know, do some speed tests. So I'm going to turn off our NAS upload. We're uploading footage that we shot today. I'm going to pause that for a minute so there's no large activity on the network. And uh, I'll get you some speed tests. However, I'm going to add a caveat, which is that using like speedtest.net, it, it's a little bit deceptive. We have found that it doesn't correlate well with uploading to Dropbox. And so our numbers don't match what you would expect. All right, we've got uploads paused. You can see there's a little bit of activity here still, one or two megabit per connection. Okay, so let's do a speed test here with all three connections. Let's see how this does. So download 150, 160 megabit, and you're probably gonna say, what? Like, that's not very much. That should be what a, a single Starlink dish does, and I agree. Um, again, uploads not looking super impressive. You know, we're getting 10, 11 megabit-ish, which is way below what it should be. Um, okay, so 150 and 11. Um, let's try changing servers and just see. I've got it pinned to this one. Let's set select automatically. Let's see how this does. Okay. Let's see if we get anything better. Not really worse, if anything. And kind of the same upload. Well, upload's a bit better now. Okay. Now remember, I care the most about upload. So now let's turn Speedify off. I'll say reconnect in two hours. Go. So you can see it's actually faster download with Speedify off. And it looks like faster upload, right? 26, 27 megabits. Okay, so why am I doing this if everything is slower according to the speed test? Let's turn it back on. I'm gonna make sure I'm on my dedicated server here too. So I pay extra for a dedicated server for through Speedify to make sure that I'm guaranteed bandwidth and that nobody else is doing anything nefarious on the same IP that I'm on. I still do run into issues with my IP being identified as a bot or, um, you know, it, it, a lot of services now are doing checks to see if it's coming from a data center versus coming from, you know, like Comcast or something like that. So that can be an issue. Oh, okay, so the tests we did here before aren't totally valid because we're on a public server. I was having some issues earlier, and so I switched to a public server to see if that would make them better. All right, so now we're on a dedicated server. We're on my server. Okay, let's try this again. So we have 235 and 28. So maybe a little bit slower on down, but comparable, 200-ish. And then upload is a little bit faster. Now, why would I do this if I'm getting the same speeds? I will show you. Okay, random iPhone video. And then I'm uploading it to Dropbox. Okay, so this is with Speedify on. This is what we get. That's not looking very good, is it? 
Well, right now I'm getting 800 kilobytes a second. Should be getting around three to four megabytes. So one thing to know is that the speeds are just really variable. This is also a high congestion time of day. It's Sunday night at about 7 p.m. So I would expect that a lot of people are using their Starlink connections in the area. So yeah, I mean, this is not particularly impressive, but it's not particularly representative for us. Usually three to four megabytes a second. Okay, so now let me try starting this over and I'll turn Speedify off. And when I, when I turn Speedify off, it just picks one of the connections. So we're getting 600, 700 kilobytes a second and climbing. This is gonna prove me wrong, prove me a liar. Okay, we're getting about, yeah, let's call it 700 kilobytes a second. So unfortunately you don't get three X the bandwidth for three dishes. You get some incremental improvement. Um, and now this is gonna prove me a liar because it's starting to speed up, but I bet if we turn Speedify back on, it will be good too. It's very hard to measure this stuff. I've spent lots of hours tweaking this. I will say I do believe this is a much faster setup for us for uploading bandwidth, but it is hard to measure in a really fully objective way. Um, so now we're getting a similar speed, but I bet if I turn Speedify back on here, while that's running, I bet it will speed up further. So yeah, you can see it's getting up there now, 1.6. So I would say, you know, we're getting 2x maybe. Um, in some cases, we're getting a lot more. When I measured it for the last video I did, it was like, it went from like, I might be wrong, but 600 kilobytes a second up to three or four megabytes a second. Um, and that's pretty typical for us. You know, it's now up at two, but you can tell it's it's hard to measure. So yeah, that's that's my setup. That's how I made it. I'll put a couple links down below to the gear I use. Um, the Flint 2 router, I really like it. The ridge mounts for the Starlink dishes, I really like those as well. I've used those for a couple years now. If you've got questions about how to make your setup work like this, um, I'm happy to answer questions in the comments or uh, via shorts. So leave a comment down below. I'll see you again soon.